Hi, uh, this is a video for Patrick, who uh, unfortunately uh, lost his cause uh, related to freedom of the press. So my name is André, and uh, I'm a jurist in Quebec City, Canada. And I'm making this video uh, after watching the, the live stream of Rogue Nation, uh, where I was able to uh, see the, uh, the whole uh, trial. So this video will be uh, in reaction to what I, what happened, and uh, I will be giving uh, lots of good tips regarding um, the appeal. So this video is going to be uh, following this part, which is the introduction. There's going to be seven parts to this video, and uh, they're going to be recorded individually and then patched together. Uh, just to make a single video so uh, I'm gonna prepare the the first part and the other parts and I will I will be right back okay all right first part okay so this first part is um, is a, a general opinion uh, regarding the live stream uh, that uh, I saw on uh, Rogue Nation's channel uh, first of all, the, the title of the live stream was uh, like a spoiler because it, it talked about uh, an injustice. So right from the start, everybody knew that, uh, Patrick, you would, you, you would be found guilty at the end of the trial. And uh, Rogue Nation, George, <laughs> that's his name, uh, he told us that he found that you had um, uh, a good defense and a good team. He told us that when the stream started. Uh, but most of us who were watching the stream, we became quite disappointed um, at the underperformance of the defense team. Uh, I will be going into details regarding what we, uh, what we didn't like. And near the end of the stream we were able to convince uh, rogue nation that the the defense the defense arguments were were not good and he even said he even said i would have been able to do better and i also personally i would have been able to do better than what was presented to uh, to the judge and the jury so uh, in the next parts, I'm going to be uh, giving more details about all of that. All right. Second part. All right. So this second part is about the absence of uh, testimony uh, from Patrick. Uh, you, you chose not to testify. That's, that's your choice. But I think that uh, it was a mistake. Uh, I think it would have been a good occasion to tell the jury that uh, you value the value the, you value the freedom of the press very much, and that you were there to uh, inform your um, your subscribers and to show them what's going on in, in the place. Uh, I think that the, there are lots of good positive messages about what you were doing that you could have. Uh, told the jury and uh, I, I don't think it was a, a good idea not to testify I think it would have been a, a good occasion to uh, to tell about your goals about your uh, your purpose that kind of things all right part three part three uh, is about the absence of case laws presented to the judge and to the jury this Part 3 will be subdivided into five parts, part 3A to 3E, and I will be going through uh, all the relevant case laws that I think uh, should have been presented to the judge and jury. And as you can see, as you will be able to see, these are very important case laws, and I just can't understand why they were none of those were presented. So we're, we're going to be going through each of those one by one in the next sections, okay? All right, part 3A, 
Miller versus U.S. So this is the first case law that we're going to look at. So Miller versus U.S. 232F.2D 486, 489, 1956, Fifth Circuit. The claim and exercise of a constitutional right, freedom of the press, cannot be converted into a crime. So this is very important. And the quote here, that's a direct quote from the case law. Okay? That's not just a summary of what the case law says. It's instead a direct quote from that case law. So this is very important uh, thing to uh, present to the judge or jury. All right, see you next part. We're back, part 3B of the video. All right, so this is, this is the second uh, case law that we're going to look at. Sherrard versus Cullen, 481 F.2D 945, 1973, 9th Circuit. There can be no sanction or penalty imposed upon one because of this exercise of constitutional rights. So basically it says just about the same thing as Miller versus U.S. And again, this is a direct quote from the case law. All right, see you next part. Part 3C of the video. So this is Glick versus Conniff. Glick v. Conniff, 655F.3D, 78, First Circuit, 2011, is a case in which the United States Court of Appeals for the First Circuit held that a private citizen has the right to record video and audio of police carrying out their duties in a public place. So where I live, the, uh, the, the security officers, the special agents that uh, maintain security inside the courthouses are considered police. I don't know if it's the same for you, but technically those where I live are considered police. So whatever uh, they are, you certainly have the right to uh, record video and audio of uh, their job, of what they're doing. Uh, if we go to a different tab, um, here, so this is the, uh, this is where you can find the, the full, uh, the full case law. United States Court of Appeal for the First Circuit, Simon Glick, blah, 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 blah. Simon Glick was arrested for using his cell phone's digital video and camera to film several police officers arresting a young man on the Boston Common. Uh, the charges against Glick which included violation of Massachusetts wiretap statute and two other state law offenses were subsequently judged baseless and were dismissed. Glick then brought this suit under 44, 42 USC 1983, claiming that his arrest for filming the officers constituted a violation of his rights under the first and fourth amendments. In this interlocutory appeal, the defendant put, uh, Police officers challenged an order of the district court denying them qualified immunity on Glick's constitutional claims and blah, 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 blah. I'm sure you're going to have lots of fun uh, reading it. It's, uh, it's quite important and interesting. All right. All right. So uh, this, was, this is the end of this part. See you next part. Part 3D. Smith versus City of Cumming, 2000. United States Court of Appeal, 11th Circuit, number 99-8199. That's a judgment, that's a case law from 2000. Uh, it says here, as to the First Amendment claim under Section 1983, we agree that the, that the Smith, with the Smith, that they had the First Amendment right, subject to reasonable time, manner, and place restrictions, 
to photograph or videotape police conduct. The First Amendment protects the right to gather information about what public officials do on public property. So this one, Smith v. Cumming, it's even better than uh, Glick v. Conniff because it's not restricted only to police. It says to gather information about what public officials do on public property. So all officials. That's what. That's why uh, this one is also very important to your case. All right. See you next part. Part four. This part is to uh, tell you that when you present case laws, in this case, four case laws uh, during a trial, then the trial becomes uh, a lot more technical. And had you been uh, informed of uh, those case laws and decided to present them, it would have been better to select uh, a trial with judge only instead of judge and jury, because the jury, it's not a good idea to bother them uh, with case law because you have to end them the case law and during their deliberation, they have to read the entire case law. So that can take a long time and that can, um, that can uh, bother them and make them feel, as feel asleep. <laughs> I'm just saying that when you have case law to present, uh, it becomes technical, and a technical trial is better to be in front of a judge only. That's what I wanted to say in part four. Part five. I think you need to demand answers from your lawyers as to why no case law whatsoever were presented, either to the judge or to the jury. You need to get answers regarding that because this is a this is a big blunder okay i i don't know what they were thinking you need to demand answers and question them and decide if uh, you still you still have confidence in them that's a very important thing part six this is about the appeal uh, during an appeal, usually no new evidence is allowed to be uh, introduced. Uh, you have to do with what was presented in the first instance. Uh, however, in some jurisdictions, new evidence can be introduced uh, during an appeal. It depends where you live. In some jurisdictions also, new evidence can be introduced, but only with the judge's permission. Now. There's a big question to be answered here. Uh, the question is, during the appeal process, is invoking case laws that were not submitted during the first instance of the case considered new evidence? That's a great question. I will repeat it again. During the appeal process, is invoking case laws that were not submitted during the first instance of the case considered new evidence. If they're not considered new evidence, then you don't have to worry about it and you will be able to present those case laws that I showed you. But that question needs to be resolved first and it needs to be uh, in regard to where you live because different jurisdiction, different laws. Part seven. This part is to uh, make you aware that you need to consider having a different defense team uh, for the, the appeal. Uh, this is something you have to think about because, man, when I was watching the live stream, I wasn't the only one who said that the, uh, that the defense arguments uh, was very bad. Many people were outraged at the absence of uh, case laws presented to the judge. Uh, I'm not the only one who was thinking that. And so, therefore, you need to think very hard about your defense team. Are you going to stick with them again for the appeal? And at the very minimum, if you stick with them for the appeal, I think they should admit that mistakes were made. All right, so 
that's the end of the video of the video patrick i look forward to uh read your comments in the comment section please uh like and uh subscribe please <laughs> i i have a small channel but i'm trying to reach a thousand subscribers so any help uh would be appreciated all right see you man and we're uh, i'm gonna read your comments and uh we'll, we'll talk again uh, i'm certain of that all right